we started with something called a set and a set is a collection of well-defined objects for us collection of well-defined objects and one example of a set is the following maybe i can use the letter m for set one example is the following a b c it's a very simple example it's a set of three elements a b and c and we looked at the we looked at the collection of all collection of all subsets of m and what were the subsets of m well we had the empty set phi the singletons a b c the duplex a b b c and c a and finally the set of all things that is a b c right so this is m uh, this is i'm sorry this is the power set of m this is known as the power set of m uh, which is the collection of all subsets of m it's very simple we start with a set we start with a set we look at all collection collection of all subsets of m and then we make a choice then we make a choice and this is the critical step and what do we choose we choose some of these subsets we choose some of these subsets and put them in a collection put them in a collection so we have all subsets of m and then we choose some of these subsets and put them in a collection so that particular collection that we have chosen let's call it t let's call it t so t contains some of these subsets for example it may, may contain phi let's let it contain a b c and suppose it has a and suppose it has b c i mean we could have chosen things differently we could have definitely chosen things differently this is one choice this is one choice and there are many other choices of a uh, collection of subsets that we can make in fact we could choose all of them that's also possible we could choose all of them okay phi is the empty set correct phi is the empty set right okay so that's one collection and if this collection if if this choice of collection of subsets satisfy certain properties then we call it a topology then we call it a topology so what are those properties what are those properties that we want this particular collection of subsets to uh, satisfy so these are the following properties these are the following properties we want the empty set or phi to be in the collection to be in the collection we want the entire set abc that is m to be in the collection and we want to be able to union and intersect elements in the collection 
So what does that mean? That means that if we have several members of the collection, if we have several members of the collection and if we union them, what you get is also in the collection. So what you get is also in the collection. So you take a bunch of members of your, take a bunch of members of your uh, collection, take a bunch of members of your collection, take a union of those, take a union of those, what you get is also in your collection. Okay, all right. And again, take finitely many, take finitely many members of your collection, intersect them, that is take what is common, take intersection means intersection of two subsets is whatever is common in both of them. So take what is common. And that is also in your collection. So this is the, these are the four things that we want our collection of subsets to satisfy. So can you quickly look into this collection that I have made here and confirm whether these four properties are satisfied or not? Can you check and confirm whether these four properties are satisfied or not. Whether or not we have the empty set, whether or not we have the empty set, the entire set, whether it is closed under union, closed under union means you take the union of several of them and you whatever you get is in the subset, in the collection, and you take intersection, it's also there, okay. As Atreya is confirming, it is indeed true. Uh, you can uh, take the union of these two and you can see that that's just ABC. And you can check with other, uh, other particular pieces as well. So intersection, yeah. So we will see, uh, I, uh, how do you pronounce it? Ion or Ion? Uh, okay, Ion probably. Uh, so um, it is, uh, why, why we will need, this is a very good question. Uh, what he asks is, why is it important to have finite intersection of subsets? Why do we have to stipulate this particular fact? And the reason, the reason will be very clear, very clear with an example. And we will talk about this example. What happens is, if you allow infinite intersection, if you allow infinite intersection, then weird things happen. I have to give you an example, what kind of weird things happen, but you don't want these things to happen. So you sort of keep it out of the definition itself. But I have to tell you exactly what happens. And I will tell you, in a little bit time, but uh, uh, the, I, the the reason we stipulate this finiteness is because if you allow this infinite intersection, something crazy will happen. Okay, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, but before we proceed, can each of you create a topology? Create a topology on M. So I created one of them. This is one example of a topology. And that one was phi 
ABC, AB, no, sorry, A and BC, right? But there are other examples of topology that can be created on M. Can you give it a try? It has to be a collection of subsets. It has to be a collection of subsets. Okay, we have one example and that is, so this is a good example. He put A, Phi and ABC. This is, a, this is a good enough example. This is another topology. Can you try other topologies? Give it a try. All of you. So you are building topologies on M. Only if you build, when only if you are able to build topologies on M, you will be certain that you understand what is a topology. So what is a topology after all? It's just a collection of subsets of M. It is just a collection of subsets of M. And that collection of subsets satisfies certain properties. What are those properties? The subs collection of subsets must, must contain the empty set, must contain the entire set, must contain A and must contain, um, must contain uh, union of things in it that is closed under unionization and closed under taking finite intersection. Anyone else? Can anyone else give me an example of a topology? I, I give me, um, gave me one, which is correct. I see there is something coming up in private message. Okay. Uh, so we have T2. Ajit is giving us empty set M, A, B, A. Perfect. This is right. This is a good example of a topology, Ajit. This is also correct. Very nice. And this one is... Uh, was given by Orion. That's correct. So we see that we have. So a set can have multiple, uh, multiple topologies built on it. Uh, well, closed under unionization means you take any set, any uh, number of members of this topology. If you take their union. If you take their union, that is also in the topology. Uh, one example, Vignesh, is this. Look at the example created by Ajit. If you take the union of A and B, the singletons, you will see that their union is also in T2. The union of the singletons A, B is also in T2. That is AB. He has also put that in T2. Okay. So now Atreya has gave another example, uh, which is T3, suppose. He calls it, okay, so phi, A, B, C. So you have to always start with phi and the entire set because that those two must be there by definition. And then he also puts B, C here, which is perfectly good. So this is also a good enough topology. Very nice. So we see that this particular uh, set M, even this small set M, has so many types of topologies that we can define on it. It's quite interesting that we can do uh, several topologies on it. So uh, when we talk about topological space, when we talk about topological space, we are actually saying the set and the topology defined on it. We need both information. So what is a topological space? What is a topological space? Well, a topological space is a set, is a set with a cho chosen topology. What is a topology? We just talked about it. What is a topology? It is a collection of subsets. 
collection of subsets of M. So that there, there is nothing confusion confusing or there is nothing complicated about this, right? There is nothing complicated about this. It's quite simple. And as Oyon gave a very good question that uh, can we count the number of topologies in a finite set? Certainly we can. We can count. It's a good question. Very nice. So we have M and T. So for example, in this particular case, M comma T1, this duplet, where T1 is this one, is one topological space. And M comma T2 is another topological space. It's not the same. Though the set is same, since you change the top topology, you change the topological space. So changing the set changes the topological space. Changing the topology changes the topological space. Okay. There is a way to compare topological spaces. We will talk about that. But for the moment, let's not go into it. Understand that if you have M, a set, and if you choose a topology, that is a collection of subsets of M with those special properties, then this particular thing becomes a topological space. Okay, so we all we talked about these in the last session, and we also talked about a little bit, a little bit of continuous functions, which is our goal continuous functions between sets. So what were continuous functions between sets? Well, they were the following that if you have M comma T1, one topology called space, maybe you can just draw it a little like this. And there is N comma T2, another topological space. And then you can define a map F between those topological spaces. So what is a map? A map is you take one element, take one element in M and send it to another element in the target space. In this case, that's N. So this is the target space where the things are going. So target spaces are sometimes known as codomain. And the launching pads and the launching pads are sometimes known as domain. Well, they're always known as domain, actually. And <laughs> this is standard term. Anyway, so we have points here. And you tell us and you give you and you define a rule that tells where these points will go in here. And and your rule is known as a function or a map. A function or a map is that rule. Which, which tells you where to send each element of M1. Okay, so that's that's an example now of a, of a, of a function. That's a, that's a definition of a function rather. That's a definition of a function. And we want to say when is a function function continuous. And we have to define what continuity is. And it's very simple. But to do that, we have to talk about open sets. And what is an open set? An open set is a member of the topology. Is a member of the topology. Is a member of the topology. Okay. So we are not going to think about continuous functions in that manner, Vignesh. This is a renewed definition that we are using. We will see 
that in certain cases your intuition about continuity will be correct but this is in a more general context that we are talking about so you will learn what continuous functions actually are in this particular definition and then you can reconcile this definition with the one that you already know in a very particular context okay all right so what is the meaning of open set then an open set is a member of the topology let's look at the example that we are working with m is abc and the topology t that we have defined on it is a uh, maybe we can start with phi so phi a b c because we have to take all of them we have to take m inside it and let's suppose we have taken a and b c okay so this is a good enough topology defined on m so now we are looking at this topological space okay m comma t now let's try to find out which subsets of m are open so question which subsets of m are open well any member of the topology is called an open set that's just a name this is a name we could have called it rows sets it wouldn't have ma mattered we could have called it flower sets it wouldn't have ma mattered it's just a name there is nothing there is no intuition of openness in some sense there is nothing to be no, there is nothing intuitive about open of the word by the by the word open in general there is an intuition in a very specific example but in a very general sense it is not advisable to attach any intuition to this word or open because things can be very wild okay so for example in this particular case there are only four open sets can anyone tell me what are those four open sets in this particular example there is there are only four open sets can anyone tell me what are those four open sets it's quite easy actually look into the example and tell me what are those four exactly the elements of t so phi clearly phi is an open set abc is an open set singleton a is an open set and bc is an open set okay question is ac an open set is ac an open set is ac an open set think about it is the set is the subset a comma c an open set what do you think take a moment <coughs> and tell me do you think a comma c is an open set okay ayan says no why not why not why is a comma c not an open set there is a very simple reason why it is not an open set it is correct exactly it's not a member of t this is not open this is not open simply because it is not in t it is not in our chosen collection it is not in our chosen collection if we chose a different topology it might have been open set okay so we understand what is an open set now we have to talk about what is a closed set and that's equally simple if a is an open set 
actually let's make the habit of using u u is an open set if u is an open set then m minus u is a closed set is a closed set okay if m is an open set then m minus u is a closed set it's a very simple idea now let's look at this example one more time phi abc a and bc okay phi abc a and bc okay let's look at this uh, a is an open set is that true is that true that a is an open set singleton a well clearly a is in the topology so definitely it's an open set correct what is the closed set corresponding to a what is the closed set corresponding to a well you remove you take or subtract a from m what do you get if you subtract a from m what do you get if you throw away a from m what do you get well you get bc so bc this is by definition is a closed set this is by definition is a closed set okay excellent excellent so this is what a closed set is but wait be careful bc is also in the topology bc is also it is also in topology so bc is open in topology bc is an open set oops i'm using open twice so bc the set b comma c is an open set the set b comma c is an open set as well as a closed set and that's perfectly fine so the set b comma c c b comma c is an open set as well as a closed set there is no problem in having both of these so is singleton a yes for example i could say vignesh is a boy vignesh lives in india is there a problem in saying these two sentences together can they be true simultaneously can these two sentences be true simultaneously of course there is no problem they could be true prafa simultaneously vignesh could be a boy and he could live in india both of the, these things can happen simultaneously right similarly b comma c is an open set and b comma c is a closed set can happen simultaneously can happen together absolutely because the word they could be both false as well Exa exactly very good point ajit let's look at the let's look at a comma c 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 vignesh that's correct phi is always open and closed that's a very good very good observation vignesh it is always open and closed why is phi no matter what topology you are taking why is phi why is open 
because it's in the topology and m minus phi that is m is cl then closed but m is in the topology so m is open so m minus m is phi excellent that's closed very nice word vignesh that's correct all right so let's look at ac the point that ajit made the set a comma c is it open is it open well the set a comma c is not in our topology so that is certainly not open so this is not open correct that is not open with respect to that topology yes with respect to we can write that with respect to t exactly okay that's good is it closed is it closed well to check if it's closed you have to remove that from m and check if this is open if you remove m remove from m and check if that is open then it is closed okay so this is just singleton b is this open is this open well no absolutely not singleton b is not in our topology singleton b is not in our topology singleton b is not in our topology so it is not open so clearly a comma c this particular in this particular example a comma c is neither open nor closed a comma c is neither open nor closed okay cool so the, we understand what are open sets and closed sets and this will clearly help us to define continuity and continuity is a very simple idea it says that look at a map from m comma t1 which is m with the topology defined on it and look at another map n comma t1 t2 with an n with another topology defined on it okay now look at open sets in n so step 1 take any open set v in n so this is an open set v in n and step 2 find f inverse v so this is the set inverse okay this is the set inverse set inverse set inverse means you basically look at all the elements that has mapped to v you take all the elements that has mapped to v so this this one is known as the pre image of v with respect to f the pre image of v with respect to f so this is a set inside n this is a set inside n so now step 3 check pre image of v under f is that open is that open in m so if you take if you started with an open set v is the pre image of that open set open is the pre image 
of an open set open that's the question if the answer is yes if the answer is yes for all v if the answer is yes for all open sets v inside capital n then the function is said to be continuous so here is the definition that if the pre image of any open set in the target space is open okay maybe i can put this in bracket this open set is in the target space so is open so this pre image is open the pre image needs to be open in the domain then the function is said to be continuous the function is said to be continuous so it's a very simple idea if if you take a member of the topology of n that is by definition an open set and if you look at its pre image and if the pre image is a member of the topology of the domain that is open in the domain set then we say that the function is continuous so what is the model the model is what is the model the model is that continuous functions for continuous functions pre image of the member of a topology is a member of a topo of the topology of domain so it's some in some sense it makes the function compatible in some sense it makes the function compatible with respect to the topologies it makes the function compatible with respect to the topology okay so this is this is what the model of the story is of continuous functions and now we are in position to define yes the pre image is the set inverse that's correct english that is correct yes okay so now we are in a position to define what is the topological manifold what is a topological manifold what is a topological manifold well to define a topological manifold we have to talk about the standard topology on the on rd standard topology on rd so what is the standard topology on rd well what is rd after all rd maybe you can just use a specific example r4 okay what is this what is r4 after all well it is a collection of ordered tuples four tuples of real numbers so like this so for example 1 comma 7 comma negative 5 comma 11 this is one member of r4 one member of r4 this is one member of r4 right so 
what is why is it really sorry why are you really sorry okay i don't know why anyway so this is one member of r4 okay that's fine one member of r4 so there could be other members of r4 for example negative 30 negative 3 2.5 7.1 11 that's another member of r4 and what is the standard topology on r4 well to define the standard topology we talked about the softball remember we talked about the softball and what was the softball so you take a point x1 x2 x3 x4 you call this point the center, the center, let's call this point P and then you collect all number, all members, all members, let's, let's do one thing, let's make a, a little bit different, light it differently, X1, Y1, Z1, W1, okay, so let's call this the center all members of r4 such that so these members are x y z w all such members such that x1 minus x whole square plus y1 minus y whole square plus z1 minus z whole square plus w1 minus w whole square is less than r square r is r any real number we call this the radius we call this the radius so this was the softball this is literally in your intuition should be like the ball like a disc you take the center x1 y1 z1 w1 you take any point that is r or less away from center in fact by our definition it's less than r away from center less than r away from center we would not we would not use equal to uh, for a reason uh, just have to we want we are trying to sort of consider the open softball i mean we could consider we could put a equality sign here well uh vignesh the softball is you just put a point x1 y1 you fix a point x1 y1 z1 w1 that's your center and then you consider all points x y z w such that x1 minus x whole square plus y1 minus y whole square plus z1 minus z whole square plus w1 minus w whole square all of these squares add up to less than equal less than r square all such members are put inside a set called b one often writes b as p comma r so it's a softball in r well don't think about it as a point take it at its face value vignesh we can always write four numbers right in this manner can we not write negative 3 2.5 7 and 11 like this for us this element p is just these four numbers written in this order you do not have to attach any physical intuition to this to this four numbers well i'm just calling it the center instead of calling it p if you don't like it i can just drop the word center 
Doesn't matter really, <coughs> Vignesh. We can. We are just dealing with the point P. Okay. I just to make it simpler. It's like I'm calling it the center. Now, well, uh, Ajit, I'm not. I'm. 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 I, mean, I think explicitly it is useful not to think about a sphere. Okay. That intuition we don't need to attach at the moment. We don't need to attach any inf intuition of the moment, etc. Yeah. So. Uh, we can keep it simple. So that's why I have not said create a distance or something like that. So there is a reason why I, did, I didn't say that. I did not use the word distance or anything. If we were, if we use four numbers, we can always put them in some order and call those that ordered four numbers as a point. That's our P. And then we take all the members of R4 such that I could have said they are at a distance uh, less than R, which I actually wrote later. But what I really want to write is this particular inequality. And that works. That works without any notion of distance. So I do not really want you to think about distance at the moment. Just this, okay? Just take this at the face value. All right. So we have this. So we have these soft balls. We call them B, P, comma R. Just to spec uh, specify this R and specify this reference point. And now, now we define open sets. We define open sets. How do we define open sets? It will turn out to be the Euclidean matrix later. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> For the moment, we don't want to use the idea of metric. Okay. So the, the open sets, the open sets are what? So U is an open set. Open set. If, so this is a definition. U is an open set in R4 if for any P in U, for any P in U, what was P? P is a four tuple, remember? Ordered four tuple, four numbers given in an order. So for any P in U, you can fit some softball so b p comma r you can control r so make it small if you want smaller if you want inside you For any P, for any P inside you, if you can fit a soft ball, BP comma R inside you, then we call you to be an open set. The intuition is really like this. If this is an open set U, if you take a point P, you should be able to fit in a small enough soft ball. You can change the radius R. You can fit in a small enough soft ball inside you. So if you can do it for any point P, if you can do it for, for any point P inside you, if you can always fit a soft ball and you can change R, you can use different R for different P's. That's fine. You should be always able to fit in a soft ball around P. Exactly, the BPR should be entirely contained in U. Yes, that's correct. If that happens, then we call U to be an open set. We call U to be an open set. So these are the members of the topology. Well, 
this is one particular topology that I am defining on R4, Vignesh. This defines one particular topology on R4. There could be other topologies which do not, yeah, if you change the topology, then certainly these, this definition will not work. But remember, we are defining one topology. So this is one particular topology. On R4. There could be other topologies on R4, which we are not considering. So we have to just work with one topology for the moment. And that's the standard topology. Call it the standard topology. Okay. All right. So, so and this could be any R. R could be any number. You have a lot of flexibility with R. You can change the radius as much as you want. The radius could be 0 0.1, 0 0.001, or 2000, doesn't matter. Okay. What you can make the radius whatever you want provided you are able to fit in the softball inside you. If you can do that, then you are happy. For every point, if you can do that, the U is your open set. So, all such U, this makes a topology on M. So this is something that you have to check. This is not immediate. Not all sets are open. No. No, that's not true. All subsets will not be open. There will be examples of subsets which are not open. For example, you can check none of the singletons are open. So if you just take, you cannot fit in any ball inside the, any soft ball inside that point. So the radius should be greater than zero for obviously, but less than infinity. So you cannot fit in any softball inside a point. A point means one number, one element. So if you take one element, let's say two, five, seven, eleven, one element. If this thing is your entire set U then you cannot fit in any softball around this particular thing inside you because it's just a point. Okay. So there is the, there's a, that's the problem. So there are many sets which are not open, which are not in. So what we, no, that's fine. So we, that's a good question actually. So all such you, all such you, makes a topology on M. That's a claim. We don't know that. That's a claim that all such U makes a topology on M. How do we know? Well, we do not know directly. We do not know. We have to check. We need to check. What will we check? The first thing is, is phi inside it. Second thing is, is M if is entire R4 inside it. Third is, is it closed under union? Fourth is, is it closed under intersection? So you have to check all of these things if or this is finite intersection. By the way, you have to check all of these things and if you can see, okay, this is working. All four of these conditions are working then this particular collection of subsets of R4 will make a topology. So this is a exercise problem. You can try this. You can try and check that all of these four things are working. Okay. Now let's quickly define the topological manifold once we have defined what is a standard topology. So for, for the moment, assume that this is indeed a topology and we can talk about what no they are not again they are not open 
for example if you take 2579 11 13 14 12 you can test you cannot these are just two points you cannot fit any ball the ball will sort of spill out so it will contain other stuff apart from this particular point okay so no duplets there, there, there are all more complicated not open sets you can think about it okay all right so quickly what is the topological manifold so we start with m and a chosen topology t we start with m and a chosen topology t yes that's correct all we start with m and a chosen topology t okay chosen topology Now, for every point in M, so M is a set, M is a set, so you can pick a point in the set. You will be able to find some U, you will be able to, able to find some U in M, so that U is open. and contains p the point p okay and now consider a map consider a map a continuous map from p from u to rd this is x consider a map from u to rd so let's let's do one thing let's call this point small x and let's call this open set ux uh actually you will get confused if i use x because maybe we are habituated of thinking of x as something else so maybe I just can call it P, that's fine, P is fine. So let's call this UP, just to stipulate that U contains P, and this map is FP. Just to stipulate that this map is taking UP to RD. Okay. So what, do, what are we doing? We have this topology M, we have this topology M, I'm um, sorry, the set M with the topology T, set M with the topology T. We pick a point P, we pick a point P, and we take an open set that contains P, that, that's UP, suppose. And we define a map FP from M, from M, actually from UP to RD from up to rd this is a continuous map a continuous map from up to rd a continuous map from up to rd it's very simple you take a point p you take a point p you take an open set that contains p call it up and take a map from up to rd okay this is a continuous map so this up this open set up and this fp this map fp this thing together is known as a chart so this is called a chart map Okay, 
<laughs> this is known as a chart. What is a chart? The chart is the open set UP comma this map FP that takes this open set to this RD, the real world. You can, if you want, you can consider it as R4. It's fine. This is a schematic diagram. That's it. This is not the actual picture. It's a schematic diagram. So now you take this, you take this UP comma FP and you look at other points. Maybe this is a point Q then this is UQ and then you have another map to another RD. UQ. So UQ comma FQ. That's another chart. So you have one chart, you have another chart. You have one chart, you have another chart. So about every point About every point, you can find an open set. About every point, you, you, should, you can find an open set. And you can find a map like this. Well, M is a, M comma T is a topological space. And UP is a member of M. So UP is an open set in M. And we are defining a map from that open set to RD. We are defining a map from that open set to RD. Okay, so for every point, for every point P in M, suppose you can find a chart like this. Suppose you can find a chart like this. Suppose you can find a chart like this. Okay. Can you still hear me? Hello, all of you. So for the collection of all those charts, you take the collection of all those charts and what happens is you get something called an atlas. You get something called an atlas. So atlas is a collection of all these charts. Okay. So this will not happen. This will not happen in any topological space. Special topological spaces. This happens in very special topological spaces. This happens in very special topological spaces. So maybe I can write that. This does not happen in every topological space. What do I mean by this? Well, the fact that you found around every point you, take, you picked a point. This is what you did. You pick a point. Pick a point. Small p. You choose some open set containing small p. That's o U p. And then you find a continuous map. Find 
a continuous map to RD so that's FP that you can do this for every point that you can do this for every point P in the topological space M this is a very special situation this does not happen all the time and I have to say a couple of other things but if, the, if you can do this but if you can do this hello can you hear me hello if you can do this then this particular type of topological space will be called a topological manifold So this topological space is a very special kind of topological space. Why? Because around every point P, you can choose some open set UP, which, which maps continuously to some FP. Well, I have to say a little bit more. The continuous function needs to be a little bit special and there are certain compatibility issues of these charts that I have to take care of but the uh, modulo those things if you if I, if I if I sort of gloss over those points for the moment if I gloss over those points at the moment this is what a topological manifold is that is about every point P you can find this kind of charts 